You know, going back to Saturday, uh, after taking time to, to grade that scrimmage on Saturday, uh, you know, Coach Trickett and I got together and just kind of looked at the, the body of work uh, between our quarterbacks and decided uh, that we had enough information to, to make a, a good decision. And so uh, after discussing with the staff on Sunday, uh, myself and Coach Trickett met with both uh, Timmy and Gary individually Sunday night and uh, informed both of them of our decision uh, to, to name Gary our starting quarterback for this 2022 season. Uh, you know, quite honestly, Gary's just been outstanding since the day that he got here. And, um, you know, whatever we thought we were getting, uh, whenever we, we brought him up for Baylor, we really have gotten uh, that plus more. And, uh, you know, I think probably one of the early signs that we had was, um, you know, throughout the summer. Y'all heard me talk a lot about our, our grit scores. And so what is that? You know, that's a daily grade uh, throughout eight weeks. You know, there's 40 workouts there in eight weeks. And each player gets a daily grade on their uh, uh, work ethic, on their ability to strain, and really on their leadership ability. Sorry. And Gary being here his first eight weeks, uh, he ended up being ranked number two out of 114 players on the team. Uh, that was a, a really uh, good early sign. And then also I can remember uh, one of our early practices, somewhere around practice two, practice three, just a little bit sloppy early on with guys kind of getting going. And uh, Gary called the whole team up and uh, really used that as a leadership moment and, and told everybody this isn't how we practice. Uh, if we're going to turn this thing around, you know, we're going to have to practice a lot better than this. And the best part about it, everybody listened. And they nodded their head. They got a breakdown, and we ended up having one of the best practices. And I looked over at one of our coaches, and I said, you know, in two and a half years, I have, I've never seen that right there. And he was being real. That wasn't him just trying to get up there and, and uh, you know, kind of to make a statement, you know, for the coaches or anything. That was just who he was. And uh, so, you know, I think, um, you know, for us, you know, we really uh, graded everything. There were about 10 different things that we really graded the quarterbacks on because I wanted to, to make sure both guys had an equal opportunity. Uh, the reps uh, with the first group, uh, I think Gary ended up with 121. And I think, uh, you know, Timmy was somewhere around 117. So it was about as equal as you could get. Uh, you know, Gary ended up completing through the first 10 practices, including the scrimmage. Uh, Gary was 80% uh, uh, completions throughout those 10 days. And um, the next quarterback was 67%. So it was really a 13% difference in completion percentage. We also look at decision making. And uh, Gary was just really uh, in the 90, 90 percentile in decision making. And again, this is a guy that did not go through spring ball with us in this offense. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, I've heard it said before that, you know, your team players kind of know it before your coaches know it, right? And I felt like that was really the situation hearing from a lot of our players, you know, after about the first week of camp, they were really, you know, kind of telling me, hey, Gary's our guy. And I really told him, hey, I want to wait, like I said, and we're going to go for, for uh, 10 practices and get through the scrimmage. And uh, but it, it became obvious to all of us. Uh, you know, Timmy uh, has had a really good summer, had a good fall camp. Uh, he really has improved. He's worked hard to improve. And, uh, but, you know, the difference is, you know, Gary is just at a, a very high level. Gary's three years older. You know, Gary's, uh, you know, 10 and two as a starter in the Big 12, you know, with, with uh, wins over BYU, Oklahoma, Texas. Ole Miss and the Sugar Bowl. I mean, that's just experience that you, you can't make up. And, uh, and that was part of our, our reason for, for bringing him in was that experience and knowledge. And, you know, part of my job as a head coach is uh, to make the tough decisions. And when I make decisions, I have to, number one, what's best for the team? And then number two, what's best for the player? And uh, it was crystal clear uh, to our coaching staff. I asked our staff on Sunday, and you know, by the raise of hands, and it was 100% unanimous that Gary's our guy. I didn't do it with the team because I really felt that I already kind of had the pulse on that and seeing how they've responded here these last two days. I know they have, but, um, you know, Timmy did a great job while he was here. He's a first-class young man. Uh, he's going to be very successful because I think he has a big future ahead of him, and I wish him the best of luck. Obviously, we'd love for him to stay, but in uh, this day and age, it's uh, I don't know many situations where you can look at a guy that was a starter one year and the next year a transfer came in, beat him out, and, and that previous starter stayed. That's just unfortunately that's not the environment that we're in and uh, regardless of who won the job i knew there probably would be one of those guys leaving and that was another reason that i wanted to do this now so we would have three weeks to kind of get over that and really for the trey marsh to now get all the reps with the twos for the next three weeks uh, rather than you know you make that decision on thursday of game week and then one of them leaves you right there then your backup quarterback hadn't really taken snaps um, but 
Uh, I'm confident that uh, we've, we've made the, the best decision for this year's team to win this year. And that's really the way that you look at it. You can't think about you know what, what's best for two or three years from now. I mean, in this environment, uh, it's about who gives us the best chance to win this year. And uh, that's really how that decision was made. So uh, we're moving forward. I thought the offense, like I said, they had their best day that we've had in fall camp. And um, just I think Gary's energy and leadership uh, is uh, contagious. And then also, uh, you know, Trey Marsh is a guy that we haven't really talked about a lot during fall camp because of the competition between the other two. Uh, but he's been uh, very steady and uh, really solid. Uh, he threw the ball well Saturday and, and threw the ball well again today. And then also Byron Brown, I'm really pleased with his improvement from when he got here in January. He's really kind of solidified himself as the number three guy right now. And uh, so we're moving forward that way. Uh, some unfortunate news. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we had a, an injury Saturday in the scrimmage. Kelly Joyner uh, broke a small bone in his foot, and we'll be having surgery this week, and he'll be out for at least six weeks. We're hoping to maybe get him back somewhere around uh, time for conference play. And I uh, really hate that for Kelly because, man, he's, he has looked excellent. He's had an incredible summer and uh, incredible fall camp, was doing really, really well. Uh, but, you know, went down, and, and thankfully it's only a, a six- to seven-week uh, recovery. Um, so we, we, we know we'll be excited to get him back. But that's probably the deepest position on our team is the running back room. You know, we really feel uh, with Kelly that we had five or six guys that we could win with. And so to be that next group, I think a guy like uh, Mikey Dukes really stepping up and, and getting in the mix uh, this fall camp uh, really helps us be able to help ourselves uh, with, with that situation. So uh, that, and we, we had no injuries that I know of today in this scrimmage. So uh, happy about that. All right, with that, I'll open it up for any questions. Jeff, what have you kind of learned about how to handle the, the quarterback um, battles over the years? Because obviously this is different than how you've done in the past, and just the way things are is different than when you were doing it yeah. functioning with Deshaun and, and, and the Kelly Bryant. Yeah, I, I think what, what I've learned is no matter how fair you try to be and how you try to do everything above board, I mean, I was the one that uh, told Brian not to put out the release on the Davey O'Brien Award because I didn't think that was fair to uh, Timmy being our returning starter for us to be pumping the, the transfer out there for that award. So what, what I've learned is it doesn't matter how nice or how fair you are. At the end of the day, when you're in those situations, the guy that doesn't get the job is probably leaving. And so, you know, probably better off going ahead and, and doing it now. You know, I kind of go back to, and I thought about this a little bit, go back to 2017, 2018 in Clemson, you know, 2017, Kelly Bryant, you know, led us on a 12 and two uh, season, right? We lost in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, this, you know, tall, blonde headed guy comes in, Trevor Lawrence. Uh, but Kelly, you know, was a senior, he, uh, very loved by his teammates and, and really done well as, as a junior. And so we were gonna kind of let it go throughout the season, not, you know, not make an early decision and hope that we could kind of, you know, keep, keep both of those guys there. And then finally, in the fourth game at Georgia Tech, uh, Trevor went in and made an incredible throw. And uh, so after that game, we decided to go ahead and name Trevor the starter game five. And Kelly decided to leave at that point, right? And, uh, you know, sat out that year and went to Missouri and had a good year the next year. And Trevor led us to a national championship that season. So at the end of the day, especially with the quarterbacks, especially when you've got a guy that was a starter, I think when you got guys competing, they're coming in, you know, those guys are gonna be a little bit more patient, but a guy that was a starter, and then maybe the other guy comes in and wins the job, you know, he's going to leave and there's nothing. I mean, I've, I've thought through it. I mean, I, I knew, I knew whenever we allowed Gary to come on an official visit, I had to be okay with the fact that if he comes here and wins the job, that Timmy's probably going to leave before the season. So I had to think about that before I ever brought him here on an official visit. And I actually called Timmy and his dad on that Friday before I brought Gary on an official visit. So I tried to do everything just above board the right way. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, that position, there's only one ball. And uh, Timmy's definitely uh, a very good quarterback, and, and I know he'll have a, a good career, but I think it was just in the best interest of this team to, to win this year uh, with Gary's leadership, his experience, uh, his, his talent, and, uh, and that's why we kind of made that decision. It's still yeah, a hard right. decision to make, though, because we, we've yeah. raved about Timmy's talent since yeah. we brought him here, and obviously we, yeah. we've seen it, to know that this might be best for now, even if it's not yeah. best for it, it, 23. It, it's a hard decision, and uh, some of the best advice that I got from Coach Sweeney, he said, when you know there's a hard decision to be made and you're not willing to make that decision, then somebody else deserves to sit in your seat. And that was just really, I mean, these are tough. And I, 
I love him, uh, and, and he, he knows that, the way that we treated him. I mean, I, I love that young man. He's got a bright future. I mean, we love Kelly Bryant. We went 12-2 and two with Kelly Bryant, went to the playoffs. And his senior year, Trevor Lawrence was just better. And so there's 119 other players in that room, and you owe it to the team to, to do what you think is best for that team. And, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a tough decision when you're dealing with, with young men and, and big decisions like that. And uh, that, that's not the fun part of the job, but that's also, you know, why, you know, you, you're in that seat because, you know, the, the leadership trusts you that you're going to make those decisions. And those aren't the only ones, right? There's, there's these things <coughs> that come along and some up behind the scenes. Uh, but this was a very, uh, obviously, one out in the open. And uh, I knew it was going to be difficult. Uh, but, you know, but I know that uh, we, we made the best decision for the information that we had. Uh, I feel very confident uh, that our players see that. Another thing I'll say about Gary is um, the first night of, of fall camp, before the very first practice, something we've done for years uh, on both sides of the ball, we do an all-in vote. And so the offense is in one room, the defense is in another room. And Coach Trickett, one of the offensive players, passed on a sheet of paper. And he had, he had every offensive player list uh, the top three leaders in this room. Who are the guys you listen to? Who are the guys you look up to? Who are the guys that are going to lead us to a successful season this year? List your top three. Don't write your name on it. They turn it all in, right? And that was before the very first practice, and Gary was in the top three. He had 27 votes. Right? We didn't have another quarterback with one vote. And so that was before the first practice. So when I tell you that our team kind of knows, you know, that, that gives you the confidence as well as a coach uh, to, that, that uh, even though it's a tough decision, those guys know they're around there all the time and, and, and they see things. And uh, it was actually uh, uh, Brad Cecil, Meech Harris, and, and, and Gary Bohannon uh, were the top three uh, before the very first practice. Jeff, is the idea of dealing with adversity, waiting for your time, being better antiquated? Or we're not, or we're not gonna see this anymore? You lose a battle and you're, and you're out? Is that how it works? Yeah, um, I think that the rules have kind of allowed that a little bit, um, you know, as a, Old school, uh, saw a little bit of college football growing up since I was little, right? I mean, that was you know what Coach Morris said. Coach Morris here with us and said, "Man, I'm sure glad that uh, when Deshaun came in and he didn't win the starting job, we named Cole Stout the starter. Deshaun's freshman year. I'm glad Deshaun didn't leave and, and go to Auburn or something. You know, it turned out pretty good for him. You know, but the, the rules have changed so much with the transfer portal. It's just uh, you know, uh, transfer por portal uh, giveth and the transfer portal taketh away, right? So." We can't complain about the portal if, if we're bringing a guy like Gary Bohannon in. You can also lose some. But you know, Timmy was the, the first player since I've been here two and a half years that left that I really wanted to stay and, and I felt like I had an important role for our team. But that's going to happen. I mean, everybody across the country, you know, loses. I mean, Georgia won the national championship, right? They had several guys they wanted that, that left to go other places. So I think you just uh, accept that it's part of it. And the other thing that you have to think about. Right, you can sit here and think about, man, well, I know Gary has one or two years, and what's going to happen after that? Well, the reality is, what's going to happen after that, you're going to see how your, your guys have developed, and then you go look around the country, and you find the best quarterback if you need another quarterback. You know, I mean, the market's always open. So this, this thing of, like, i got to have this guy here for the next four years, I mean, we, we found out about Gary in three days, and he was here about two weeks later, you know, and so that's how transient I think it is a little bit. Um, but you, you better make sure you have at least one. I mean, we're, we're really fortunate that uh, Trey Marsh came out of the portal in December and, and came back uh, because we, we could have been in a, a different situation than we are now. Uh, that, that was probably a, one of the lessons you learn in that is uh, don't, don't let those uh, you know, threes or fours leave because you're going to need them. If you have a really good contested race between one and two, you're going to lose one of those. That other guy needs to step up. So really fortunate that, that Trey's here and, and doing well. If there's any benefit to this, <clears throat> might be the fact that if both had stayed and Gary doesn't play too well, <clears throat> excuse me, and you put Timmy in and he plays really well, now you start to get back into a quarterback conversation kind of again. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't even kind of go there in my mind because it's just so hard to get there. And honestly, what I'm looking for, I'm looking for one quarterback to be our quarterback and to go lead our team, and short of injury, he's our quarterback, right? I mean, go back to my experience. Trevor Lawrence, Deshaun Watson, they were the quarterback, and you knew it. I mean, you can name the good teams in college football, and you can name who their quarterback is. You get in this deal, and you're kind of going back and forth, you know, kind of been there, done that. 
And that was probably part of why I made the decision now. Because we, we need to, you know, this is not just the starter for BYU, this is the starter for our season. And uh, so I needed to go ahead and kind of declare that. And I wanted to do it before other schools, other programs started class and all that. So whoever didn't win had a chance to, to go somewhere else and, and move on. Um, so that was also part of the process. Coach, as Paul Harvey would say, the rest of the story with Bryant and Lawrence, you waited four games. Right. You named Lawrence the starter, Bryant decided to leave. He gets dinged up in the Syracuse game. You're bringing in a guy yeah. who would be your yeah. Trey Marsh. Uh, you, you get a point right there. That's a point right there. <laughs> yeah, Bert, that's exactly right. Uh, Bryce came in, and uh, Chase Bryce came in against Syracuse and uh, led us on like a 90 four yard touchdown drive. Couple of fourth down. Yeah, a couple of fourth down, fourth and six. We ran a Washington route, T Higgins, right there. Syracuse was gonna beat us. And I believe that was the national championship season. Yeah, that was that, that same was. season. That, was, that, might have, that might have been the week or two weeks uh, right after Kelly had left, one, one week right after that. So yeah, that's, I'm glad you brought that up. I'll have to uh, remind Troy of that. And give him a little history lesson there. But yeah, there's, there's no doubt. Uh, I mean, you've seen it all over the country right now. You know. When you have more quarterbacks leaving and transferring and going, you know, and they haven't, you know, and then whoever wins the job, and then there's one more, you know, group that kind of leaves. So uh, I just need to make sure, you know, you got the one that you feel gives you the best chance to win, you know, this season. And with Trey, it's the best move he didn't make. He's in the portal. All of a sudden, he's number right. two. Yeah. How, how do you, 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 you complimented his play on the field so far in preseason camp? How is he? And yeah. everything so, so, and yeah, so Trey, you know, I, you, you guys have heard me talk really well about him. He hasn't played well uh, in some of his opportunities uh, that he's gotten in a couple couple games. Uh, but if you were to go out and watch his practice, he's one of the best throwers on our team. And, uh, you know, sometimes it takes guys a little bit longer. But he's been working at it. And, uh, you know, I, I feel confident, especially with him having three weeks to, to kind of get ready. Um, you know, I feel confident with, with him if, if his number is called. But I think he's he's matured, you know, kind of from the process of where he was coming in, just as a young guy, a little bit immature, just kind of a big arm. To understand, and you know, when you go through those experiences, those are kind of scars that you get, right? And that kind of stays with you and kind of motivates you to take a little bit more attention in that meeting, like figuring out where your your hots are and how how to, to uh, handle the blitzes and all that. Whenever you get hit in the back and the ball comes up and, and they go score on your national TV, so. I think he's he's learned from a lot of that, and uh, you know my big, my big message to him is you know be ready when your numbers call. Right, you can look at uh, Baylor's season last year with Gary, right? And, and Gary goes down, the next guy comes in and, and wins the uh, conference championship game. You know, so I think uh, it, those guys definitely uh, have to be ready, and, and I'm confident that Trey will. There's a lot of things to address here, and you know the quarterback competition. Your guy from last year has left. All the emotions, but you're you're moving on. And you've got a guy with Gary's experience and yeah. talent and leadership to lead you into the season. How do you feel about yeah. having a guy like that yeah. do that? Yeah, feel great. I mean, we, we do a safe seat on uh, each night for the first 15 minutes of our uh, team meeting during fall camp. It's really an opportunity for the players to get to know each other. So last night was Gary's night to come up and just kind of talk to the team a little bit. I kind of asked him some questions. I mean, it was like a coach talking to a team and every guy just sitting there listening to every word that he said and he was just so genuine and so real i mean that that feeling in that room there, there wasn't a lot of a lot of people really worried about you know kind of our future i think they're they're confident in gary and, and confident in uh, us moving forward but again just to kind of reiterate that's why i wanted to do this now you know, it's kind of a 24 hour 48 hour story and now let, let's move on i didn't want that to be 48 hours before byu and, Somebody doesn't show up for the bus to go to the game, and now we got drama in pregame and all that stuff. But let's go ahead and, man, these are tough things, right? You got to address them head on, do it the right way, handle it the right way, and uh, and then let's move forward. And I mean, the guys move forward maybe quicker than the coaches. I mean, that's what, you know, Coach Morris told me walking off the field yesterday. Said, hey, man, just get your head up. The players, they're already over. They're good. They're moving on. You know, sometimes as coaches, just when you invest a lot and, you know, spend a lot of time with a young man, it, 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 uh, you know, a little bit more personal on that part, but you know, our, our guys are young guys move move on, and especially when they know uh, that it's the right decision and all that, uh, you, you get good buy-in. And they and they also know the situation in college athletics with the transfer portal. You know, I don't, I don't think all of them blame you know Timmy for what he's doing either. You know, they, they wish him the best of luck, but but we're moving forward. Do you overall see a 
better sense of stability in your quarterback room from, you know, let's say at the start of fall camp versus when you came in back in, in, in 20? Because, you know, obviously it's been a bumpy road to get where we are. Yeah, I think when you think of your quarterback room, you always start with, do I have a real guy as our starter? And yes, I feel like uh, we've got a real guy as our starter. Obviously, you know, he's one of three quarterbacks in our league to be a, a Davy O'Brien, you know, preseason list or whatever, whatever that means. I mean, he, he's a real guy. And, uh, you know, I, I don't listen to the uh, radio during the season, but, you know, early in the morning, there's not much on. And late at night when I go home, there's not much on. So I'll listen to maybe uh, XM radio, ESPNU. And I've heard Gary's name talked about <laughs> probably 10 times over the last two weeks just because he's been kind of in that, in that national scene and remember they're talking about Baylor and all those things and some of the games last year. So uh, I feel very confident that we've got a, a real guy and not just a quarterback throwing the ball, but a leader. I mean, again, to be a, a, to be a, a good team, you've got to have that quarterback that can drive that car and really move that offense. And our O-line, we've got good leadership there. They've been trying, but it, it's kind of hard to, to lead from the you know, front bumper. Right. You got to have that, that driver that's in that seat that's talking to everybody, you know, that's truly leading. And, and that was part of our decision when, when we decided to recruit Gary is we just felt like we had a lot of good pieces, but we just really needed that, that driver that could really drive that car for us and get us to where we wanted to go. Coach, do you see the offense expanding a little bit more with Gary at quarterback? Yeah, well, I mean, I think when you say expanding, you know, we're, we're, we hadn't seen Coach Trickett's first play yet, right? So. Uh, but yes, Gary, uh, as any, as most fourth or fifth year player, I'm not sure exactly where he is uh, in that. I think this is his fifth year, three, one, and one, going into his, his fifth year. So he's had four years. But yeah, he has a very high football IQ. And uh, on his official visit, he actually brought this up last night when he was talking to the team. His official visit here, instead of going out downtown with the players, uh, him and Coach Trickett went in the video room till you know about 1 a.m. You know, watching on an official visit. So he's just a guy that just loves ball. He wants to know every little detail. And when you have a guy that's like, I mean, again, the best quarterbacks are coaches on the field, right? You see it in the NFL all the time, right? They're, they're letting some of those guys call plays and do things. And that's what it feels like when you have a, a fourth, fifth year guy out there with his experience. So it does allow you to, to expand a little bit. And really in this day and age, it allows to, you know, the, the RPOs, you know, it's having, having that guy that can make good decisions in RPOs you know, use the RPO, it's either uh, really, really good here and bad here, or good here and bad here. It's usually not good either way. And so having a guy that can make quick decisions, understands the different defensive looks. I mean, defense have been going against R RPOs for a while now, so they have different things they do. So you can give him a little bit more just because of, you know, his, his experience level and seeing a lot of different defenses. I mean, go through that list of defenses he played last year. Uh, that, that's a pretty, pretty big group right there. Um, so yeah, I think we're, we're able to do a little bit more with him. I think also at the same time, beginning of the season, uh, you, you want to start here and then and then kind of build it, build your catalog as the season goes. Coach, give us that one player that when fall camp started on offense and defense, there wasn't even a blip on the radar, but now is in the conversation for some playing time. Yeah, um, I give you I give you two. Uh, one would be a Joe a Joe, a receiver. This spring coming in, trying to, to learn, even though it was a similar offense, terminology was different. He struggled a little bit, was not as consistent. And uh, he had two nice touchdowns today. Uh, he's really come on and doing very well. So I would give you that. And then uh, the other name I'd mention, this guy's played a lot, but I think he, he uh, took a lot of, uh, had a lot of adversity uh, in his uh, first two years here. It's probably the MVP of our defense right now is uh, Matt Hill. You know, he's moved to a different position there uh, where Smoke was at that nickel sand. And uh, he's probably been our MVP of the defense, uh, you know, through the first 11 days. And I think it's a really good position for him. Uh, he, he does really well around the ball. And uh, so we're, we're expecting big things out of him. Uh, did not see Clyde Bender today with the defensive line. It's, it's yeah, so Cl Clyde is uh, not with us. Uh, he had some academic things that he's working through, and uh, so he, he's not with us right now. Okay. Do you expect him to be back at any point, or is it still kind of to be determined? Uh, I think it's probably to be determined. Yeah, but it's out of our control. So it's really between him and uh, academics on campus, and we'll know more here as it gets closer to school starting. Ask 
I want to hear from more players. Uh, Nolan Turner, yep. kind of overlooking high school, yep. a lot of success at Clemson, now trying to make the Bucks roster. Yeah, uh, that, that was awesome. We took our uh, team to the Bucks game Saturday night, and uh, Nolan was out there playing a, a bunch of plays. That was awesome to see because I do remember uh, whenever uh, we signed Nolan, you know, Coach Sweeney uh, played with Nolan's dad at Alabama and uh, really watched Nolan grow up. And I think we were the only, Clemson was the only uh, Power Five offer that Nolan had coming out of high school. That doesn't normally happen at Clemson. Uh, maybe the only other one was uh, the Hunter Renfro. That turned out pretty good. Uh, Hunter Renfro actually walked on. Uh, he didn't even have a scholarship. But Nolan was a guy, whenever he came in, again, a lot of the Clemson fans are kind of questioning, you know, why he's there. Uh, but, you know, Coach Sweeney believed in him and, and saw a lot of, out of him in, in high school. And uh, he was a guy that came in as just a student of the game. I mean, really, you know, the NFL, obviously you, you got kind of that first tier of just incredible athletes that are just giants and, and just uh, kind of phenoms, right? But then really your core of your teams are guys that are just, uh, they're pros and how they go about their business on the field, off the field, the way that they study, the way that they train. You know, he's, you know, to me, I'd kind of put him in that, that category that I said Hunter Renfro. When he walks in the room, he's not going to impress anybody, but he gets out on the field and uh, he, he, he gets the job done. So uh, I'm really pulling for Nolan and definitely would not be surprised to, to see him uh, be able to make it. Um, it's exciting. Jim, how's Matos continuing to develop? Obviously, yeah. his first camp. Yeah, uh, Matos. Uh, I learned a little bit more about Matos. We had the safe seat with him. That was pretty interesting. Uh, he was like a, a rising baseball star uh, in the Dominican Republic. And uh, we, we kind of were not sure if he was telling the truth up there, if he was just kind of telling uh, some, some fibs. But uh, you know, he, he really was. He's a, a great baseball player early on. And then he moved over to basketball. And then now he's moving transition to football. Um, he's probably the best looking player on the team as far as you, you know, he's going to be the guy we let off the bus first for sure. Uh, but he's still <laughs> learning a lot about him. I mean, he looks like the NFL guys right now, but he's got a lot to learn. I mean, he's just never played football before. Um, so he's got a lot to learn. But what I'll say about him is it's important to him. And again, I keep going back to that grit score thing because that's just a, that's a consistency and work ethic. He was, in the, he was in top 10 in grit score. Coming over to football, never being here, going through football workouts because he just has a desire and a drive that he wants to be great. But there is also just a lot to learn. So uh, he's getting better. Uh, but I, I, I would say with his size and ability and his want to, it's going to come. Uh, but it's probably going to take a little longer because literally, I mean, he never played one high school snap. You know, in the scrimmage Saturday, it's the first time he ever played in a scrimmage situation. Uh, but, you know, the, the good news is, uh, you know, he's 20-something years old and he's got four years of eligibility left. So he's got a long time. But we, we, we put him inside, working him at D-tackle just because he's, you know, whatever it is, 6'6 six, six or 6'7 six, maybe, and, uh, you know, 285, 290 pounds. He'll be 300 pounds pretty quick after we start traveling and, and eating the hotels on Fridays and Saturdays. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm excited uh, about, about him in the future, but it's still a little bit early for him. He's, he's learning he can't just stand up and, you know, try to look over the O line of the backfield. They'll, they'll, they'll run you backwards. So he's kind of learning through a little bit of that. But what, what I can say about him is and his desire to do it, that's really what you look for. And guys that come over from basketball or come over from another sport, it's, you know, do they really want to do it or do they just think they want to do it? And he really wants to do it. So it's going to take a little while, but whenever it clicks for him, uh, we're going to be excited that we have him. What kind of impact can he make on special teams? Yeah, uh, he's really good at blocking field goals because of his length, and he's done a good job with that. And then also with his length, we've, we've had him working a little bit on uh, field goal protection, just being able to help out as a wing and kind of use those long arms. And uh, so I, I think that's probably where he could have a – an early impact on special teams. And then as it goes, hopefully we can get him some, some game experience and, and see how he does. Coach, how does uh, Jimmy Horn look so far? Great. Uh, I love Jimmy. Jimmy's doing awesome. Uh, I think it was the last press conference we were talking about kind of those guys that come in as freshmen and the light kind of comes on and just a, a maturity level and all that. Uh, he, he's a hard worker. Uh, he's out of outstanding uh, fall camp. Uh, and I, I really expect Jimmy and, and Weaver to be Two of the, the top receivers in our league before the season's over. What does Gary Bohanna do best? Uh, what does he do best? I would say lead the team. That's what I'd say. His, his lead, presence in the room. Just his presence in the room I mean, and people follow. Like, like I said, that, that early practice we had, we didn't quite have that energy right. 
And I really called the team up because I wanted them to take a knee and I was going to kind of address what I saw and this and how we're going to start it. And he just stepped right in front. And I was like, okay, it's be a good time. And, uh, and he, he kind of told the guys, hey, this isn't the standard. This isn't how you do it. This isn't how we're going to do it. And I said, I agree. Broke down and we went. But the biggest thing that I saw in that is the guys listened to him. And he'd only been here, you know, you know, a couple weeks in the summer. And they listened to him and they responded. And, uh, and leadership like that's hard. You know, we talk a lot about leadership, right? And you, you can see the, uh, you know, the highlights of uh, the locker room speeches by Tim Tebow. And that's very rare these days for guys to, to be able to step up in front of their teammates and really lay it on the line and, and for the guys to listen to them. And, um, you know, even at Clemson, we had a lot of great players, but sometimes we had a lot of quiet leaders just kind of lead by example. And they can still be okay, but you need that guy when it's not going well that can get everybody together and look them in the eye, very similar to what Tom Brady does with the Bucks, and everybody listens and they respond. And uh, that, that's, that's what I'd say that that uh, Gary does best. How much of a problem do you think it's been, Jeff? Because your quarterback situation has not only been unsettled, but there haven't been any guys in the spot, even when Timmy came in, that have played and won mm -hmm. at a high level. Yep. And how much difference is that going to make if this is a guy that maybe, the, maybe in the past the team he said some doubts, yeah. and now apparently they don't. No, I, I, I think that's something you can ask me here in a minute. I, I think that's part of it, too. You know, I think it's uh, maybe one of those uh, God wink moments, my first uh, team meeting in January, whenever I was uh, kind of using a couple teams as an example of how you could you know, change from one season to the next with a great offseason and attitude mindset. And I used Baylor as that example, and I remember they were the first team I put up there. The guys were just kind of stunned right there. They went from 2-7 and seven to 12-2. and two. They went from pick second to last in the conference like we are, and then they were the conference champs, right? And then I didn't have any idea that Gary wasn't going to be their quarterback. I didn't even really keep up with any of that. And then, you know, five months later, the guy that led them on that season, just how it worked, found his way over here. So immediately when you walk in the room and that, you know that that quarterback's been out there in some big time battles and beaten BYU and, and Texas and Oklahoma and Ole Miss, and, you know, then that brings some credibility and guys want to listen to that. And uh, so there, there's no doubt. I think that becomes uh, contagious. And we're not just bringing that to an offense that you know, doesn't really have the, the pieces. I mean, we, we've, we've done a lot of really good things. And you could probably say overall in, in two years offensively, you know, just kind of an inconsistent quarterback play has probably kept us from, from some wins. And so that was part of my decision of if we can find a guy that can bring consistency there, then I owe it to these guys uh, to do that. All right. Thank you all. Yeah, Appreciate thank you. it. Thank you.